This episode is brought to you by Familiar Coffee, a decaf coffee company that provides specialty decaf coffee directly to your door. Check out familiarcoffee.com or on Instagram at Familiar Coffee Co. to learn more. Hey, welcome back, high performers, to another episode where we dive deep into the essence of health and wellness with a special focus on nutrition because it's March's National Nutrition Month. Today, we're thrilled to have Luke Smith, a fellow dietitian entrepreneur, join us to share his insights and journey in the health industry. Luke brings a wealth of knowledge from his experience, combining the science of dietetics with the art of entrepreneurship to help people achieve their health goals in sustainable ways. Together, we'll explore the latest nutrition science, debunk some common nutrition myths, and offer practical advice for living a healthier life. So grab your favorite high-protein and balanced snack, and let's get started on another enlightening conversation. Let's go. Yo, I want to say Happy New Year, but it's not even there yet. It's We're recording this on the 27th. I can't even say getting ready for New Year's Eve, but uh, bro, Happy New Year. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, likewise. It'll probably be out come New Year, I'd imagine, but it's crazy to say we're us we're already hitting 2024. It's honestly insane to me. Okay, so you and I are both entrepreneurs in the space, both dietitians, both coaches. Um a lot of people have been posting images of themselves talking about how hard 2023 has been. And usually, I want to be the type of guy, Luke, that like talks shit. <laughs> but I can't because 2023 has been incredibly hard. I, do you feel the same way? I couldn't agree more, dude. Yeah. I think for different <laughs> reasons for everybody too. I mean, from like a content creator standpoint, I think it's been maybe the hardest year to be on some of these platforms just because of, man, I don't even want to say uh, how saturated it is because it is, but I think saturated with maybe not as high quality coaches and it's it's harder for consumers or general people to just weed through who's legit who's not who has good intentions who doesn't who's trying to sell me something on the back end and everything right now is all about numbers attention and people are doing whatever they can to grab your attention and some of the things that I've leaned on since I've you know started creating content in 2021 or whatever it was and they just don't they don't hit the same and I I imagine you might feel similarly, but everyone talks about the algorithm and all this stuff, but strictly from a content creation standpoint, even from a consumer standpoint, people are just expecting different things. And, and I mean, like businessmen, we have to, we just got to acclimate to it, but it's tough to do that when you've kind of been in a routine, your whole, you know, your whole career. You know, it's interesting too. I, uh, I, I literally, and this is something that I have to do better in, in 2024. I was, I was talking with my wife like a month ago and like, she's not an entrepreneur. She's a trauma therapist. Uh, she's not really interested in running her own business. Cause she's like, I see how much stress you go through. Like, is, I don't want to do that. Like I'm perfectly cool with what I'm doing and I love what I'm doing. So we were, Luke, we were having a conversation and I just made the mention that I was like, Oh, like I got two of my stories landed in men's health this week. And she's like, wait, you're, wait, hold on back up. Like you're, you're still writing for them outside of the book deal that, that you had like back in 2019. I was like, I've been on the advisory board and I'm constantly contributing. You know, I have like 10 to 12 pieces on there right now that are just in the ethos that I, outside of like giving it to my editor and getting the okay, I've never looked them up. I've never talked about them. And I, I say, I I'm saying this to say that like I literally just wrote a story where it's like here are the five signs that you can you can trust an online wellness creator. And it's so interesting to me because one of the things that I have found just like you in 2023 is that my message is getting buried in just the ethos of of everything else. And it's really hard to kind of come back and to stay consistent because it's like why am I doing all of this work if no one's going to listen? And and I think that piece is really hard. Because what's even better than that, Luke, is <laughs> so I, I, I created the five signs, right? Are they credentialed? They don't speak in absolutes, like all the stuff that we do, right? As, as coaches and, and, and quality people sending a, a message of wellness and, and those things. I made the comment where it's like, if they're able to help you approach a sustainable approach that isn't just all about supplements and all these other things, dude. <laughs> The supplement hit me up on Twitter. They hit me up. The supplement company hit me up on Twitter. They hit me up on LinkedIn. 
and they pretty much were just like this supposed uh, expert and dietitian says that supplements don't work and here's our research and i kind of just hit the dude up and i was like hey first of all i think a supplement is great for an already balanced diet i i'm really big on the concept of you can't out supplement imbalance like there's there's things that you need to be doing so you took what I said out of context. I just want to make sure that I say that here's my stance on it. And you should be third party tested to which you're not. <laughs> right. And I, I thought to myself and I was like, this is kind of the arena where people really don't do a lot of research into the overall message. They just talk shit. And I'm like, and I think that piece is hard too, where People like you and myself are trying to really get a message out there and it gets lost in all of the other bull crap, which causes the people to like not trust us. I mean, let's be honest. I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I felt like this is a good jumping off point because I'm like, damn, like you're really going to come after me about this. <laughs> yeah, dude, I just found myself nodding my head to everything you just said because it <laughs> kind of goes both ways, right? You have you know, that list of five things credentialed, not mm -hmm. polarizing, talking in black yeah. or white, not sure what else is on that list, but all stuff that I imagine um, yeah. would just separate somebody who has gone to school, who critically thinks, who doesn't jump to conclusions, <laughs> who is a little bit yeah. more neutral when it comes to the health and fitness industry, um, what we're trained to do at some level. And then the hard part is you have these companies, these influencers, uh, the fit fluencers, I like to call them sometimes too, the people who are really fit yeah. and influencers kind of like, uh, <laughs> that's a dangerous spot to be in when you identify them. But um, yeah. all these people who, <laughs> you know, get compensated for promoting products, promoting continuous glucose monitors or the yeah. lumen met metabolism adapting device, right. <laughs> or yeah. even just like their leggings and whatever, you know, um, uh, brands they're endorsing. Yeah. And let's be real. Like they look amazing. Right. But it's been a lifelong pursuit for them. Not to mention that they also use Photoshop sometimes or add filters yeah. to their photos or have the best lighting and the perfect angles. Not to mention the underground truth of like pharmaceutical help in the fitness space, I think is at an all time yeah. high now because a lot of people are looking up to these people. Um, but we also have even like kind of these doctors and these outspoken other people who do have a credential behind their name that are spewing yeah. out all this information that it's, uh, is again, very black or white thinking, very polarizing, very fits their agenda or their supplement line or whatever it is that they believe, or maybe they've done that, you know, they've anecdotally found this thing that worked for them and they're trying to push that on other people. And then it leaves people like us. I don't want to say left in the dust, but it puts us sometimes in a negative headspace, which um, there's a lot of accounts out there that do call out those accounts or they have a you know snippet of somebody saying yeah. something and then they show the research debunking, whatever it is. But it takes a lot more effort to do that than it does for me or you to sit up here and be like, broccoli is dumb as fuck and you shouldn't eat <laughs> yeah. it and it's got these nutrients in it and then you yeah. post it. And then before you know it, you know, you have followers, you get 2 million views on it. Like that's how, that's how kind of social media is rewarding people. Um, and unfortunately it puts people like us in a negative headspace come, you know, to social media where we're using adding for marketing, you know, also giving out free advice, information, bringing on amazing guests on podcasts. And that's the stuff, like you said, that gets drowned out in the other stuff that Andrew Huberman is just constantly talking about, you know, all dopamine. the magic tricks that other just these, dopamine. you know, exactly dopamine and, and ice baths, bro. Like that's all you need Ugh. to do for your health. So I don't know if that builds on that it, at all, but yeah, I just, uh, I find that no, it does. my mindset around does. social media has changed a lot. And I think that's, what's made this last year a little bit more difficult. I think from my perspective, when it comes to showing up and being authentic and trying to continue the, the path that I'm trying to create for myself right now. You know, it's Luke, it's interesting too, because uh, a lot of our listener community are athletes, uh, professional athletes themselves, past athletes, and also entrepreneurs that are trying to navigate an idea of like what's next in their next given endeavor. And, and I've been seeing this across the board too, with some of these like 2023 was hard posts where it's like the consumer experience has changed right whether it's the economy 
what's going on politically. Like there's a, there's a bunch of different factors. Like you can't just pinpoint one, you know, the housing market, whatever the hell. One thing that I am coming to where I'm like, I actually, as a consumer myself, have changed some of how I purchase and what I devote and invest my energy into. And I'm wondering if this is kind of the same question where it's like, what are the five things you look for in a credible wellness creator or a credible voice in the space? You, Luke, being someone like anytime that your shit comes up, I will take a moment to watch because we're friends. I respect what you're saying. And I always learn something new. And what I think is really fantastic is you take a realistic approach to, let's say, building a different body, body recomposition, developing a relationship with food, developing a relationship with exercise, like all those things, right? And I think that's what's really fantastic. <clears throat> As you're looking at creators in the space that you stop and you pause to see what they're saying, this is kind of a, I'm asking you not to be polarizing, but I'm asking you a polarizing question here. Um, are there characteristics or examples of, of where you're like, this is, this is why I devote my energy to this person because this is what they have. Yeah, totally. That's a great question. And, um, I think taking a step back, it's, uh, it's important to realize that us as coaches and us in this space, we are working with actual humans, you know, and, and humans that are likely very different right. from you, people who have yep. very different experiences, who have very different income brackets or socioeconomic status, yep. um, different interests, different ways that they ideally want to live their life for the rest of their life. And I think when it comes to like health and fitness, especially there's a lot of people out there that get into this mindset of like, okay, I've been conditioned into thinking that I have to give up a lot of my life or part of my life in order to pursue whatever goal it is. It doesn't even have to be a body goal necessarily. Body recomposition, of course, you know, losing fat, building muscle. It's usually what a combination of uh, it's a combination of things that people need. Most people, especially as our country gets a little heavier, right? And uh, we're yeah. struggling with all these health complications that are becoming more common than they've ever been before. Uh, so there's generally a list of things that I would say that people should and need to be doing to maintain their health, maintain their performance, maintain their you know uh, longevity when it comes to living a life that they enjoy while also pursuing a body composition or something that they um, that they're proud of or that they feel comfortable living into, you know, and there's yeah. this mindset that these things have to be mutually exclusive all the time. And they don't necessarily have to do that. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that if you need to lose, you know, 40 pounds of weight, that what you do to lose that 40 pounds is what you need to do for the rest of your life. Not necessarily yeah. saying that like being in a deficit is one thing, but learning about energy balance, getting back to a place where you're eating more, um, learning about what inputs of your metabolism or what and how you can influence that learning how to incorporate your meals around some of these big fundamentals when it comes to your nutrition and your macronutrients mm -hmm. and how much energy output you get during workouts and steps like there's a lot of big things that people all i think could benefit from learning um, but those are usually the things that get clouded out with the other stuff where people are really yeah. nitpicking or talking about how you need to do ice bath, for example. You need to track your blood sugars meticulously, especially if yeah. you're an athlete or, or you should be minimizing how much blood sugar response you get. I'm hitting on these things because those are just stuff that I see commonly in the yeah. space now. But there's a laundry list of stuff when I realized that for my content, at least, I really want to get people to understand that there's a hierarchy of importance when it comes to a lot of these things. Yep. Yep. And unfortunately, the things, the shiny things, the interesting things, the things you didn't know, the small details, the ingredients, you know, all these people that are talking about these really fine details when it comes to your health and with your nutrition and what you should and shouldn't be doing, a lot of those people really fail to essentially organize or disclose like where this would fall in the list of importance when it comes to taking care of your health or changing your body composition or changing the way you look or changing your relationship with food. And unfortunately, a lot of these people, maybe they have good intentions, right? Like I'm not shitting on people saying that everyone out there that's really popular, that has a million plus followers, all has terrible intentions. I don't think yeah. that that's true. 
but they're unknowingly doing more harm than good, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And that's where, at least for me, this shit pisses me off a little bit more than what it used to, especially you, you know, your wife being uh, a yeah. big component of people with eating disorders and coming out of yeah. that and recovering. I've again, been in that space as well, but like seeing the damage that some of these people and some of these accounts are doing, because now you have somebody who already didn't have a really good foundation of what it means to be healthy, or they didn't really know about how much fiber they should be eating or how much protein they should be having or um, how their plates should look, right? Like things that we see online and, and we look over because, oh, this, this ingredient has, you know, high fructose corn syrup in it. So I have to avoid this and everything yeah. else that has that completely. I'm not saying you have to avoid, you know, or should eat more high fructose corn syrup, but just understanding that like, Hey, these small details, these ingredients, what your blood sugar is, you know, are you doing an ice bath three times a week for three to five minutes at a time? Are you doing hot exposure? Like, like, are you doing these, you know, combination workout moves? Like all these things that catch your attention because fit people or what you perceive to be really smart people are emphasizing a ton, but they've failed to list the big rocks that I like to call them. And yeah. for me, it's just emphasizing the importance of like, Again, I keep coming back to it, but it's not sexy. It doesn't sell. And that's, again, uh, what makes this harder yeah. to be a coach in this space now is, you know, you get somebody and they think they have to be doing all these things. And then you talk about sleep and you talk about stress management and you talk about, you know, your micronutrients and what colors you're getting in your diet. And you're talking about getting enough protein. You're talking about getting 8,000 steps a day, all stuff that deep down people understand is important, but they just get confused because they have all this influx of information coming in and they don't really know where to start. Or they think that allocating their time to something else is going to give us the best return on their investment. When in reality, it's not, it's going to give you a small percentage of that. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but from a coach, like that's just kind of the, the thought patterns that I've been able to evolve over time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, like looking back at my content, even two, three years ago, like some of it, maybe I'd nod my head with, or I would change it completely, but that's, the powerful thing of, of being a coach and being something that's open to being wrong or changing your thoughts. But yeah. a lot of people don't do that. They just further bury themselves in a narrative that they think is best for everyone, which is scary. It is. It is. And I, and I think to your point too, like a lot of the things that we're teaching isn't necessarily sexy. Like if I'm telling you that if you want to increase your energy, it's far less about how much you have to be caffeinating throughout the day and a little bit more about how you spend your day and what the, the, I usually tell people, Hey, the first 15 minutes of your day and the last 15 are, are super crucial. Depend, it really depends on what you're doing. And I think like, it's not very sexy telling you to go to bed. Like I'm not your parent. I'm, I'm not, I understand that. And <laughs> if you're really struggling with energy throughout the day, which is causing you to do some overeating or some binge eating, and you're not feeling great about it, which is keeping you away from some of the people that you enjoy most and maybe not allowing you to go out into that creative endeavor because you don't like the way that you feel or look like, listen, more is tied to your sleep than you want to give yourself a little bit more credit to. Right. And I think that's just one example of the hierarchy that you're talking about too, because I think about people like, like, a uh, Dr. Adrian Chavez, shout out to him. He's out of Phoenix. I love the way he goes at trolls. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's pure amazingness. You look at someone like Jordan Syatt, who literally just did a month's worth full of the continuous glucose monitor, was had himself in a calorie deficit, did his labs before and after, ended up losing a, ended up changing his body a tremendous amount and showing people that, you know, you could eat things that spike your blood sugars. It's not really about the small occurrence or acute occurrences of blood sugars, but really what it is over time. And as experts, we know all of this. We're like, hey, like this is great. Like this is such a great and enter entertaining way to tell this story. But I think people don't want to hear that. And as we close the chapter on 2023, head into 2024, I wanted to ask you, Luke, like as a coach, I'm sure you have clients who are transitioning from 2023 to 24, and I'm sure the both of us will probably have an influx of people that come in right now and, and, and in the next month and likely beyond. What are some of the key things that you're teaching your people with how to build, how to get, how to get excited about the new year, but still build sustainable habits that last into 2025? 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good question. I'm going to start since we're on this subject already of like accounts and people you're following and where you're getting your information from. I would honestly include this. And I talked about this with all my clients as well. Um, but just to start out with it of like cleaning up where you're getting your information to. Yes, uh, that's your such a good from, one. Where you're reading it. Uh, when you invest into a coach like Desi or myself or other, you know, really awesome coaches mm -hmm. in the space, ideally it's going to be somebody that doesn't have a one size fits all program that they're just funnel you in, funneling you into so that yep. they can just take a before and after photo after a three month stretch or a six month stretch. Like if you see somebody out there that's saying like, I have five spots available for my individual or for my custom program. Yeah. Like usually sometimes those are, those are like marketing strategies that for me give a red flag for some coaches of like, Oh, you know, you're not selling to somebody like what they actually need. You're selling what maybe you've learned in the past or a, yeah. a process that you try and run everybody through. And yes, there might be some relatability from person to person to it, but understanding that this really is an individualized approach and this is something that you should be doing with somebody who has your best interest at hand, they're not going to run you through the same numbers, through the same mill that they do um, with other people or, or the marketing that they've used to like get you interested yeah. in what they have to sell. Um, with all that being said, I find that having people really look at who they're following. We relate this to Instagram or TikTok or wherever you, you know, consume your content, even Facebook, yeah. Um, cause everybody at some level is probably doing that right now, but really looking at the people who kind of like we're talking about right now, who talk in black or white terms or in absolute mm -hmm. terms who are constantly making you fear different things or who are scaring the shit out of you. Like those are probably the people that you could unfollow and live a happier, better life. Um, I promise you, whoever's listening to this, like we are not learning a ton of robust new information in 2023 or 2024, especially when it comes to nutrition and fitness. Yeah. A lot of the things that we have, the principles that we'll talk about in a second are things that we have bodies of literature on for yeah. decades now, decades. things like fiber, things like protein, yeah. things like creatine and different supplements, mm -hmm. um, even caffeine, like all of these things that we know a lot about that we're fine tuning, that we're finding maybe different upper end range, different, um, you know, timing preferences, like whatever it might be but the body of literature is not changing a ton. So if you have somebody saying like the government missed this and this used to be <laughs> part of the food period and they're just like creating this whole story and narrative to scare the shit out of you of eating like a whole wheat bread, those are probably the people that you could unfollow. So I have to start with that, Desi, because I think clearing out where you get your so information good. from could be very beneficial for a lot of people. And instead of, I'm a coach, like I probably follow, you know, hundreds of different coaches out there to, expose myself to what's being said. But for the average person, if you're following two to 10 accounts fitness related that you trust that have your best interests yeah. at hand, that can clean up a lot of these problems and confusion around what you should or shouldn't be doing heading into the new year. So I want to start off with that. Um, big rocks, things that I'm really passionate about and things that I want to get people on board with. And again, this isn't like this is usually something that people come to me for because there's a lot of ways to do this, right? Some people don't track calories at all. Like the, there's different ways to go about your doing, uh, doing whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish yeah. with your sport or with your body. For me, I'm really believe that tracking your food, at least for a period of time can be in a really informative process, yep. especially if you haven't done that with an extra set of eyes or a coach. Like I get people have bad relationships with my fitness pal or tracking their food because usually it's done with the mindset of like, okay, I have to track my food because I know energy is important. And then I'm just going to eat to, you know, 1400 calories and then be miserable. But you don't know how much protein you're getting. You don't know how much fiber you're getting, right? Like I'm not a macro coach per se. I think there's a very finite amount of instances where somebody would yeah. actually need to track carbs and fats. One of them being if you're a pro athlete or if you're like 100%. trying to step on stage because you're doing a bodybuilding show. Or yeah. if like you're coming from a low carb camp and you're scared shitless to eat carbs and it's like, okay, we want to get to at least hundred grams of carbs per day. Like setting some targets I think can be beneficial, but from what we've seen in the literature, as long as your protein and your calories are at, you know, in check and, 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 you know, in alignment with what you're working towards fat yeah. loss, body recomposition, gaining muscle it doesn't really matter where your carbs and fats fall. And that can take a lot of like handcuffs and this like, you know, 
creating these Frankenstein meals that I'm sure everybody yeah. who's tracked macros at one point, either had you know what it looks cashews, like. <laughs> yeah. a chicken breast and like uh, a banana or something for dinner, you know? So for me, like helping people understand how much they're eating, what their normal days look like, how much they're eating and they're drinking when they're away from home, which is really a slap in the face for some people because people have this perception of I'm eating 1800 calories. But then you realize that like the average restaurant meal now is like 1200 calories. If you go out yeah. to lunch or dinner and then yeah. you add two or three drinks onto that on a Friday night and a Saturday night, like you're probably in a surplus on the weekend. Yeah. It's, it's, there's yeah. a reason you gained five to 10 pounds this year. Yeah. Um, so just like helping people track and doing it with the, with a positive headspace of like, Hey, we're trying to like build awareness around what we're doing. And then we're building habits and strategies around maybe hitting some of these numbers. So you know what that looks like, you know, what portions look like, you know, the importance of getting, you know, 40 grams of protein at, at breakfast, because you're not going to be ravenous going into lunch, which is going to make it harder yeah. um, for you to control your cravings come later in the day or at night. And now a quick pause on our episode to talk about something that changed how I enjoy my daily cup of coffee. This segment is brought to you by Familiar Coffee, the experts in specialty decaf coffee that doesn't compromise taste. March is Caffeine Awareness Month, and it's the perfect time to reflect on our caffeine intake and how it affects our daily lives. Whether you're looking to reduce your caffeine consumption for health reasons or simply seeking a delicious cup of coffee that won't impact your sleep, Familiar Coffee has you covered. Familiar Coffee specializes in decaffeinated coffee sourced with care and precision, ensuring every sip is as satisfying as your favorite regular brew. They deliver directly to your door, making it easier to enjoy a premium coffee experience without the caffeine. So if you're curious about making a mindful choice with your coffee routine, check out Familiar Coffee. Visit FamiliarCoffee.com or follow them on Instagram at Familiar Coffee Co. to learn more about their selection of specialty decaf coffees. Trust me, it's specialty decaf coffee worth tasting. Now let's get back to our episode. Day or at night. So there's a lot of big fundamentals, but I think tracking calories and protein for me at least is something that I help a decent amount of people do for a period of time because it, it can be really, um, really an enlightening experience done with the coach. And then along with that, like, yeah, like meal timing or building um, a plate and what your plate comp composition should look like yeah. and how much um, fiber you're getting throughout the course of the day, getting to 25, 30 grams of fiber for a lot of people, um, is something they have no idea what that looks like, you know, and they yeah. think that, Oh, I had a half a cup of raspberries. That's a serving of fiber, right? It's like, yeah. no, eat no. the whole container. And that's what actually yeah. you should be getting with your breakfast yeah. or putting in your smoothie kind of thing. Yeah. So when it comes to nutrition itself, fiber, protein, how many calories you're eating can be a really I think yeah. good starting point for some people, if they've had some experience doing that, doing it with a coach could be different. Um, but if they've never done that before, there's a lot to learn that we could walk alongside the client with. Um, not to mention, I'm a hypertrophy type of lifting coach. There's yep. not an exercise regimen that I don't love, right? We just have to make sure what your goals are are in alignment with what you're uh, doing. Like yeah. if you're going to get those results that you're doing, if you're trying to be a pro athlete, but you're doing like a bodybuilding split, like probably not going to be in your best interest, right? Yeah. Opposite hand, like if you're trying to, you know, build a better upper body, build a lower, you know, half of your, your body doing like orange theory every single day of the week might not get you to where you want to be. So just making sure our actions and what we're allocating our time to exercise is really important also to, to sprinkle that in and doing it around what we're doing with your food. Um, and then sleep, stress management, you mentioned yeah. 15 minutes to start your day, 15 minutes to end your day yeah. could change your life. I'm in agreement with that. Getting people into a routine where they're like creating a, a regimen and taking time for themselves could be very difficult for people. So it's hard because there's all these big principles, but for some people, yeah. they might have some of these things down. So we really just need to, to tie up and um, turn the notches up of some of these other things that maybe have been neglected or maybe they don't know, you know, they haven't been doing as well. But it's not going to take you coming and just trying to make your best better all the time. Usually it yeah. comes from people coming from a place where they think they're doing a lot of good things and maybe they are, but maybe for two weeks out of the year or two weeks out of the month or you know three days a week, they're not hitting those targets or they're not being honest with how adherent they yeah. are to something. It might take just being able to make small improvements there. And that's when you see progress compound over time. So for me, I'm not going to sell like a fat loss program to somebody start at the beginning of the year, 
the yeah. thing that person might need most is to execute like a pre-fat loss checklist. Are we getting in 8,000 steps a day? Are we lifting at least two or three times a week? Are we getting three meals a day with a you know, good enough protein source with that? Are we hitting, having yeah. a fiber source with every single meal? Are you getting enough water in every day? Are you in bed for at least eight hours a night? Like getting those habits in check before you start to cut calories is just an example of like, you know, maybe giving somebody what they need instead of what they think they need. So yeah, long winded way, but yeah, it's, it's hard to answer because there's so many inputs, but that would be kind of the things that come to mind, at least from a coach and what I've seen a lot of success with my own clients. You and I have a lot of alignments in, in approaching this too, because even the concept of like the big rocks, I like to think of those as like your, <clears throat> your keystone habits, if you will, you know, like what are some of the things, the highest ROI, and it's not even really just about change that you can see maybe on your body or maybe in your behavior. But I think what is also, what also gets left off the table that I would love to bring back as a keystone habit is also like how you think. Like, what are your thought patterns going into certain things? You know, I'm thinking about a, a client that I'm working with right now. We're in our second transitioning into our third month. And anytime a client comes on, Luke, like I'm very clear about painting them the picture. Hey, first 30 days is about us making small little tweaks. I want you to mess up however you feel like you're messing up because I get to see the real and vulnerable you then we, I can help you because if you're lying to me or if you're omitting things, then we're just not really communicating effectively. So I need you to just be raw with me the first 30 days. The next, six, the next 30 days into your 60-day period, it's about making some of those adjustments and tying in some of the goals that are aligned with what you want to see out of this opportunity working together. And then as we get into day 90 and beyond, that's when we can start really doing some of the cool work, right? Like, the individual that I'm working with, super tech savvy, like tech entrepreneur, like doing really cool things in life and is going to continue to do so. We're kind of stepping into that phase where we can start taking a look at like, hey, like what would, what can creatine do for you? What can caffeine do for you? Right? Like what are some of the things that we can optimize some of the input so that you can maximize the output of what you're doing? Right? And I think that's what's really cool about this process, because I think in the grand scheme, people really miss out on the idea that if you've kind of been coming into this years and years of not taking care of yourself, really not navigating stress management in a healthy way, navigating unhealthy relationships with all things, and you're kind of wondering to yourself, like, well, a six-month program or a three-month program, like, that seems like a commitment. Like, it's not if you really think about it. Like you've been struggling for years and for most probably decades is three months, six months, maybe nine months of your life really that much time? It's not. It's not. And I think most people miss out on that. And I, and I don't know, Luke, if you're having some of these same conversations, but um, there's a reason why when I create programs, like I sort of treat them as intensives. We do them in three month spans. Because it allows us to be really finite with what we're working on. <laughs> and if I'm also being incredibly transparent, it, it also is a little bit of a vibe check for me where it's like, inevitably, when you start to struggle, because we all do, are you the type that is coachable? We can have honest conversations with one another. Or are you the type that blames everyone else except yourself? And if that's the case, you're, you're getting a three-month program out of me and, and I will wish you best of luck outside of that. So I, I don't know, Luke, if you're having the same conversations, but it kind of reminded me with these big rocks of like, I like to create things around the people. And I think that gets lost in the messaging and, and any sort of creation of a message or content or anything like that. It's just, I almost feel like I need to step back into just doing like recipe posts. <laughs> <laughs> Like just to get the numbers back what, up what we're doing now yep yep <laughs> <laughs> just hilarious right uh i think your friend you know andre saista he uh he posted the uh, overnight it. oats recipe and it like did yeah. better than any of his posts has ever done and it's like, like damn, one mil really and beyond and climbing it's crazy exactly <laughs> yeah no it's funny you mentioned that and i think i think you bring up a good um piece of this which is a timeline perspective and I think a lot of times we've gotten conditioned and again, maybe it's comes from following people who post the eight week transformation photos or 
you know, mm -hmm. essentially what's happening is out of the person who has the 500,000 followers, they run a transformation plan to start the beginning of the year that they used, you know, marketing show you a before and after photo of somebody and thousand people sign up for that. Only, you know, a quarter of them actually finish that program, you know, maybe 10 people had amazing photos. And then that content creator picks one to three people that you see on their slide. So yeah. you're really comparing yourself to the 0.5% who maybe already were lean before going into that challenge. Yeah. Or have really good genetics or um, have never done anything like that. And they saw really quick newbie gains. And so the timeline piece is really important. And we talked about transparency is stuff that I don't think a lot of coaches have in the space, but you and I both can agree that even after that three month mark, Hey, maybe, maybe you are in a position where you just need three months of work. And that's something that we yeah. both feel good with, you know, spreading, you know, uh, apart from one another. That's yeah. what we always dream of as a coach, right? Is understanding the fact that this will come to an end one day. And what we're doing is leading you to a place that you could do this on your own and you don't have to ask for yeah. help ever again. But that three month minimum, or I say three month is a minimum because that's the very small time frame, but it's cake work compared to what you've work. been compared to what you've been living. <laughs> like, it's totally, nothing. totally. And if you if you think about it, three to six months is a very small fraction of the course of the year, honestly, but of course of your lifetime as well. And people think that they can unlearn five years, ten years, even a year of like, <laughs> you know, uh, habits and routines and mindsets. They can unlearn that in a matter of months. And it, the reality is, is that's not really likely for a lot of people and it's tough to hear but once you get a grasp of that and like appreciate the fact that like hey 2024 hits i'm gonna look very different if i commit the whole year not even if you know financially if you can't afford to work with a coach more than six months great but yeah. you know understanding that like hey i'm gonna commit this next year into thinking about what i'm doing and implementing these habits and going through these different times where i'm periodizing my nutrition or doing different mm -hmm. training regimens and you will be a completely different human, especially if you work on the mindset piece at the end of that 12 months as well. You're not just doing, I don't know about you, but a lot of times when people come to work with me, they have this perception of what I, what they think I'm going to tell them to do. Um, yeah. And then before you know it, I have them start tracking and it's like, wow, you know, you have no carbs throughout the day. You have your chicken and broccoli with lunch yeah. and you know, you have a salmon patty or whatever with uh, quinoa at dinner. It's like, do you normally eat like this? And it's like, they completely <laughs> change the way they're doing things. So I'm yeah. in agreement with you. Like the first week, at least first month, that ex exploration <laughs> phase of like, just track what you normally do. Like, I want to meet you where you're yeah. at instead of just like feeling like you have to overhaul your entire life just to like fit into this box that you think I'm going to put you in. That's not how this shit works. You know, it it's works not. that way with other coaches, but that's not what you're going to get with Desi or myself or a lot of other amazing people out there. So, um, yeah, I just find that I say funny, but, um, man, when you have just human psychology is so fascinating to me because when another person has a set of eyes on you, like our whole mindset, our whole approach changes, especially someone that you that trust. I, Yes, especially exactly. someone that you trust, right? And someone that you can be transparent with. It's so funny to hear you say that too, because one of my favorite things, and I'll say it to all of like my new clients that I that I come on with, <clears throat> it's like getting them into the mindset of I just need you to show me everything that you're doing. So, you know, I say this out of love, but if you show me a salad and you don't eat salads, like you're really just hurting this process. I need to see what you do. You know, you can impress me on day 30 with some of the things that you're learning here. But in the first 30, like I, I need to see what the what the raw version of you looks like. And I think that piece is is really cool because sometimes the way that you feel about yourself, how you're operating within your body, your habits, like those are the first things that are going to show up in improvement. And maybe the things down the line, you know, how you look in the mirror, like, you know, if you're getting bigger, faster, stronger, like if you're an athlete. Like those things come in time. And I think sometimes we really miss out on the opportunities. And as coaches, someone who's guiding people in the space, like we need to be really good about creating milestones, like helping them truly to understand some of those little 1% lifts. And I think, you know, we talked about this on your podcast where it's like, you know, what, what's, what are the aspects of a high performing human? And it kind of, it goes back to those big rocks, Luke. Like I, I'll scream it from the mountaintops. You know, what are the habits and the rituals? What are the things that allow you to have the biggest ROI? And sometimes that ROI 
is compounding. Like it's finances, right? It just happens over time. It doesn't happen right away. And I think those pieces are incredibly massive. And and I think also kind of projecting forward, uh, Luke, I have not done this yet. I usually do it around my birthday, which is here in a couple of days. But um, I stopped writing goals for the new year and I started writing more intentions, but doing so in a way where it's like, I almost post date, I, I do post date the letter a year from now, talking to a past version of myself in the past tense where it's like, here's all the things that you're able to do. Congratulations. And, and I think it, what it helps me do, it helps me set the stage of, okay, where am I at currently and where do I need to go and, and who do I need to step into? So I have not done this yet. So I'm kind of cheating as I ask you this question, but uh, what can people expect from Luke in the next year? What are, what are some of the things you're excited about? I mean, we got to end it on that at least. Totally. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that and, this was not planned at all for the audience, but I do the exact same thing every year too. I write a letter to myself. You do? Acting as, yep. As if I'm already <laughs> yes. at the end of 2024 and I'm reflecting on my year. I See, think that's- This is why like, we're friends, bro. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's a, it's a very powerful thing. My letter will probably be sent to me here in the next three or four days, um, which is always something cool to look back on. And you might not accomplish everything, but you, you bet your ass you're going to see a lot of the things that you wrote. January, 2023, like you're going to accomplish yeah. a lot of it. And if, if you didn't, you're going to be damn close to it or closer than what you would have, if you, maybe you didn't yeah. think about it at all. Um, but yeah, I, I just find that fascinating too, just while we're on this topic. Um, because when you think about it, there's all these milestones. You said that word, like there's all these accomplishments, these, all, all these outcome goals that we're trying to look forward to that we're working towards. But people have this perception that they can't be happy until they hit those things, um, yeah. which can take away from the experience as a whole. Now, when you break it up into more actionable steps, you know, we're talking about writing a letter to yourself like, okay, I want this thing to happen. I want to hit this financial marker. I want to hit this body fat percentage. Like, what is that going to take to get there? Right. And when you get really serious and you pay attention to detail, like you're more likely to, to, to be able to execute that on that and have that be an outcome by the end of the year. And I think uh, everything in fitness is related to finance at some level too. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I think part of coaching too is knowing why you're doing what you're doing. I think somebody coming in and working with you or working with myself, if they're under the impression of like, I just, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I think you're missing a huge opportunity to actually get better um, and actually make this more sustainable and and make these more informed decisions for yourself going forward. And, and for us, like, I think if, uh, if we have a client and we have somebody who's doing these things, it's really important to talk about why we're doing what we're doing. Like what is the optimal amount of sleep that we should be looking for and yeah. why, what can happen if we don't do that? You know, we talk about getting 160 grams of protein, for example, like why is that important? What happens if you don't do that? Like, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that somebody, if somebody asks them, they could answer confidently of like, oh, I'm eating this amount of protein every meal because it's more satiating and I'm working on building muscle right now. And these are the amino acids that it takes to be able to, you know, the resources that my body needs to build and act on the training that I'm doing right now. And it's something that keeps me more full throughout the day. And I find that I feel better. Like if somebody can answer that, if their mom is like, why are you eating so much protein at this meal? Like for me, that's a victory as a coach, but it comes yeah. down to like, the process again. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not something that people want to hear. It's not something that always sells, but that's this whole thing that, you know, this lifelong pursuit of your health and your fitness, it's all going to be a process. There's never these yeah. end goals that we think, you know, might happen at the end of the year. So appreciating that and just, uh, understanding that you doing the things that you know, you need to do and, and, understanding why is likely the thing that you need most instead of seeing a lowest number on the scale. Like that shit's not going to make you happy. The thing yeah. that makes you happy is you actually going through what it takes to get there. And then that's just going to be yeah. a byproduct of that. So just had to mention that for 2024, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to write down my, <laughs> or sit down and write my letter here in the new year. But like I said, from, I still uh, haven't written mine is... yet and I will, but I uh... <laughs> <laughs> for sure, from a business standpoint, um, man, for me, offering a few different things, I'm, I'm really trying to expand what I do here in my community and try and give back a little bit more um, with the people who I, you know, the beautiful part about remote work and doing this online is like, you get to connect with so many other people. But I find that 
I work with like same. 2% of the people that I have as clients are from Reno, Nevada, which is where I'm from, yeah. which is like not what I want to be doing. I want to be able to give back here. So I'm going to offer more of like a corporate kind of speaking stuff, half day, mm -hmm. full days, meet with the, you know, the company, small business, whatever it is, just be able to like show my face and, and be a resource for companies or have a CEO be able to give back to their company. Like I'd love to do the corporate talks. I think that could be really beneficial and yeah. give resources to people who would never want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but give them a place where they can talk to a dietitian and bounce ideas off of and come up with a plan that, you know, they're just not trying to figure everything out on their own. Also creating some like lower, lower ticket, like nutrition courses, um, kind of like lifestyle nutrition. Um, mm -hmm. and then also pairing like a fitness kind of like, Hey, here's 30 or 45 days of workout stuff that you yeah. could follow along with to this other thing, just as like a, a, a lower ticket item for somebody who wouldn't be able to want to do one-on-one -on -one or couldn't afford it. Just offering more to my people. But again, it's uh, it's all fun to think about it, but it's, the, it's acting on that and actually mapping out how we're going to do that is the hard part. So I'm excited to start to get to work on that because I've had a lot of ideas, but the implementation piece of it, as you know, is, uh, is always the hardest. So I'm saying it right now to manifest it and make it come into, make it, make I mean, it come true. It kind of sounds like that's what needs to land on the letter, right? It's so funny, man. Exactly. I, uh, yep. I feel the same way, you know, even in my Arizona and Tucson community, I, a lot of what I'm doing is all outside and there's some people that are doing some cool things locally that I don't know them because I don't, I don't go into the community, you know? And I think this is probably a phase that a lot of us are going to go into where it's like everything was on lockdown, everything needs to be online. And then you're starting to see some of the change and some of the consumer behavior. And you're like, well, let me take this out of, you know, my ego. This isn't about me. This is about like what is going on. And I think if we're all sort of feeling a certain way of like it's time to get back in person and time to say what up uh, and start collaborating to that end, I I share that, man. So I, I appreciate you saying that because I I'm on the same same wavelength. Yeah. It'd be cool to see you grow here this next year too, because I know I speak on behalf of all your listeners as well, but the work that you've put into the podcast and your content creation and, and just how long you've been committing yourself to this, man, it's uh, it's cool to see your evolution of all of this. And the people who follow you and listen to you are, are damn lucky that they, uh, that you've blessed them with your time. And uh, well, I know that you. 2024 is going to be even better than what you've been doing. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's cool to see other content creators be able to help so many people. And even though it feels like we don't impact that many people some days, every day, yeah. sometimes, uh, yeah. we got to, again, put in perspective of like, even going back to your, you know, magazine stuff that your wife pointed out. It's like, dude, yeah. at one point in your life, you're probably looking dude, there and be like, it'd be a dream to write for men's health, you know, like, and uh, now yeah. you're so desensitized to where you've been that you've kind of failed to actually appreciate what what this whole year has done for both of us and everyone as well. So just life lessons. Yeah. I think that is relevant to everybody, man, stop, smell the roses. It's hard, yeah. but it's probably the thing you need to do most because the things and the goals that you're working towards right now, maybe, you know, we're not something that you were thinking about six months ago or a year ago. And that's all yeah. progress and stuff that needs to um, be given some attention to at some point. Yeah. No, nah, man, I appreciate you saying that, Luke, and, and likewise, bro. It's been cool to see your growth as well. Um, all right, we'll end it on this on this note. I always like to ask uh, more or less the same two questions. I sort of did it out of order with like, what are your goals in 24? So uh, you answered that. But Luke, one of my favorites is, is always like, hey, this is the Can't Believe I Made It podcast. So have you made it? And if not, what does making it look like in your current season of life? Yeah, I think at some level, like we've all made it, you know, if yeah. you reflect back on what, again, last year, two years ago, what the, the, you know, dream of, for me, owning my own business looked like, of course I made it right. But the goalposts continue to move always with time. I think this proud, but not satisfied mindset can be very productive, at least for someone like myself. So acknowledging that, that, Hey, maybe there's a financial target I'd like to hit. Maybe there's, um, a certain amount of clients or people that I have contact with this next year. Um, those are the things that I will write in my letter, things that I'm 
projecting into the universe that hopefully I get, you know, a return back here in the next year or two years. But for me, making it to that five year mark, I'm at three here in, in the next week or so. Um, for me, would solidify this concept that like, hey, I've been able to survive on my own and create something yeah. out of nothing and be able to like live a life that I enjoy living while also doing something that I love to do as well. Um, so it doesn't get much better than that. So to answer your question, I have made it. There's always different metrics and different goals that I'm going to be shooting for, just like yourself and everybody else out there. Yeah. But I'd be I'd be dumb to sit here and say like, no, I'll be happy when, because that goes completely against how I <laughs> condition your try and help people think yeah. and uh, how I try and think as well. So I love it. I love it. Well. For our listeners out there, uh, you are obviously hearing this in the new year. So happy 2024. Uh, my my hope for you as we continue to engage our amazing guests on, on the podcast with our solo episode and some of our storytelling apps, um, I want you all to be reminded about how powerful you truly are. And if you are choosing to stay stuck, I want you to allow yourself permission to notice that you are choosing to stay stuck and it's no one else's opportunity and no one else is to blame but yourself so i say that with love happy new year once again luke stay on for a couple more minutes man i want to connect a little bit uh i'll catch you guys on the next one we got a lot coming into this month and beyond but uh it's an exciting time happy new year y'all <laughs>